In this video, we're going to look at a pair of lessons that are known as zooming number line activities. And these are activities where students are given a number line, like this one. They see a point on the number line, and they make a prediction. What is the location of that point? Having made that prediction, they're then able to magnify or zoom in on their number line to see if their prediction was accurate, and if not, to make a better prediction. So let's check out an example. What is the location of this point? I think this point might be mm, 87. So in order to check that, I'm going to press this zoom button. And when I do, this interval between 80 and 90 is going to appear below this number line, and it's going to expand so I get a much better sense of the location of this point. Let's watch. So here's our interval, and we can watch it as it grows. And OK, here's that point that we see here. It's at the exact same location, but now that I've zoomed in, I can read its exact location. It's at 86. And I can check that by pressing this button. If I'd like to play again with a new problem and a new location of the point, I can press this button and make a prediction and press Zoom. Now, once I'm good at this, I'd like to move on to problems where I have to do a little more work to make my predictions. So notice here that the intervals between tick marks, each of them is 10. If I move to page two by pressing this arrow in the lower right corner, we have a new number line, but now the intervals go from zero to 100 and 100 to 200. So we have to work a little harder to figure out what the location of our point is. So what's the location of this point? I think it might be 320. So let's press zoom to magnify this interval between 300 and 400. Okay, so now I have this new number line from 300 to 400, and if I look at it, I can figure out that each tick is um, representing 10. So we have 300, 310, 320, 330, and I see that my point is actually somewhere between 320 <clears throat> and 330. So my prediction of 320 was good, but it wasn't exact. So I think the location of this point might be 323. How am I going to check? Well, you guessed it. I'm going to zoom in again, this time on this interval here between 320 and 330. And let's see, oh, okay. Now each tick represents one. So the exact location of our point is 324. And again, I can press new problem, and each time I'll need to zoom in twice when making my prediction. This pattern continues on subsequent pages. Here, each of these tick intervals is a thousand. So we're going to be zooming in not once, not twice, but three times to pinpoint the exact location. And when we're really good, we're going to play this game where each of these tick intervals is 10,000. So we'll be zooming in even more and getting lots of practice about thinking about place value. Now, in all of these problems, the location of the red point is always an exact integer. But what if it's not? That leads to our second activity, which is zooming decimals. Here we have a point, and it's somewhere between 8 and 9. Oh, so what's its location? I think it might be 8.8. .8. And in this activity, I can actually enter that here, just so I can keep a record for myself of my prediction. And I'll press zoom to magnify this interval between 8 and 9. And 
And here I see tick marks, and I have to think about what they represent. So I have eight and nine. Ah, so this is 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, and our point is at 8.7. And if I like, I can enter that here and then press check. And as with all of these, I can press new problem to give me a new point. And as you might imagine, as we saw with the previous activity, we can have variations of this challenge that give us opportunities to think more deeply about place value. So here, for example, on page two, I might predict that this location is, well, maybe I think it's 8.8 .8 again. And when I zoom in on the interval between eight and nine, Oh, I see it's not sitting at any of these tenths. It's somewhere between 8.6 and 8.7. Oh, so I'm going to have to now think about maybe making a prediction in the hundredths. So maybe 8.68. And I'll zoom in again. Ah, 8.6. Point six seven, And if I move on to subsequent pages, we see when we do these that we have to zoom in even more times. On this page, we're making predictions that go to the thousandths. So lots of good practice here with place value and visualizing it by zooming in. I'm just quickly zipping through this. I would be entering my predictions as I was doing this. And on the last page, which is super interesting, here I see tenths. I zoom in again, and I see hundredths. Thousandths. And ten thousandths, and oh, it's still not even precise at ten thousandths. If I press check, I see even more digits here beyond ten thousandths. And I get the sense that I could just keep zooming in further and further and further. And something else that's really fun to do here is to press the animate point button, which is going to slowly move this button, I mean this point. And let's watch what happens when this point moves. If we're just looking at this point, we can sense it's moving, but it's really slow. But here, when we're seeing that same point move, when it's magnified and we're seeing tenths, it's moving faster. Here, when we see it magnified even more at the level of hundredths, it's moving quite smoothly along. And at thousandths and at ten thousandths, it's really zipping its way across. Ten thousandths, we can't even really see it move smoothly. So we're seeing this one point as it moves, but as we zoom in more and more and more, that movement seems to get faster because we're looking at it with fine green detail. So this describes both the zooming integers activity and the zooming decimals activity, both are, which are part of the dynamic number project.